Why are billionaires conspiring to destroy the economy? Let's talk about the third rail of the current discussion around the economy, bank runs, a recession, right here, right now. So for the last year or so, billionaires, really rich people, you know, the heads of Citibank and Elon Musk and so on, have been talking incessantly about recession. They've been talking about how the economy is going to slide into recession and everybody better be worried. And of course, you've got this whole, you know, side community of like crypto nerds and other kinds of weird nihilistic investors living in a parallel universe who, you know, have been talking about great recessions and depression and, you know, keep all your money in, uh, you know, in crypto assets. But one wonders why are they saying that in an environment where like the jobs reports continue to be strong, there's like core growth in a lot of fundamental industries, why would they keep talking about that? What is in it for them? And I think typically like in school, we learn that when the economy turns down, when there's a recession or a depression, that everybody kind of gets hurt, right? Like you think if asset prices go down by 10%, then that affects everybody and everybody loses 10% of their assets. But if you're very wealthy, a decline of 10% in your assets doesn't hit you quite as hard as somebody like near retirement, right? If you're near retirement, your assets go down by 10% or even 20%, that might delay your retirement by years. But if you've already got billions of dollars, it nonetheless leaves you flushed with cash at the end of that time and makes it easy to start picking up assets for on the cheap, right? Because the people who are more leveraged, poorer people, middle-class people, in a downward asset environment, they suddenly are in situations where they might have to panic sell. And so the rich come in and now their money goes further. They're able to buy more things. And this is part of the normal cycle of the economy, right? The economy goes up, asset prices go up, the economy goes down, asset prices go down, buy low, sell high. Well, it's been a relatively extended period of time without a low, and the rich are starting to get antsy, especially in an environment where interest rates um, you know, are going up and they've had a long period of time when they've been able to buy things very cheaply, right? Because money's been very cheap. Effectively, the interest rate's been zero. So now people with a lot of money want to keep being able to buy assets at no cost to them. And the only way to do that in a higher interest rate environment is to cause asset prices to go down. They need asset prices to go down in order to make more money. And so they have been directly or indirectly, I'm not going to suggest that anybody is directly conspiring, but the evidence is starting to build that they are. They've been conspiring directly or indirectly to kind of wreck the economy. And I think it's a huge head scratcher, right? Um, until you understand why they might be incentivized to do this. What do they get out of a worse economy? So first it's talk about recession, talk about recession, talk about recession. Knowing that this economy is very influenced by people's individual behavior and affect, especially given how much the billionaires control the media today, you know, Twitter and Elon obviously being a big one where a lot of rumors spread quickly and falsely, Mark and Facebook and, you know, uh, the Washington Post and Jeff Bezos, whatever, blah, 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 that they have control of all the different forms of media. If they talk enough about recession, eventually people will start saying, oh, no, there's a recession. Well, that didn't really work, right? Because the jobs report was strong. The economy was growing. Yes, inflation is terrible, but it's not that bad. So everybody's kind of sort of chugging along. Things are working fine. And then Silicon Valley decided that the only way to move forward and cause the economy to crash was to have a run on the bank. And so look at that story about Silicon Valley Bank collapsing the other day. It is directly connected to conversations between investors in Silicon Valley and tech startups. There literally are these chats, group chats that people are in, in which investors are saying in a coordinated fashion, mm, I don't know about Silicon Valley Bank. Maybe you should take your money out. There's no downside to taking your money out. There's plenty of evidence of this and people have the receipts. That is a whisper campaign run on a bank. And they were successful at getting that bank to collapse. Now, today there's news about First Republic Bank. I'm more motivated around that because I've got, you know, money, my most of my money is in First Republic Bank, which would, you know, really suck if something happened there. But what I'm seeing is this consistent pattern where people are trying to manipulate the market to reduce asset prices in complete discordance with the actual state of the market. And you know, a lot of our laws about securities regulation, many of the things that came out of the Great Depression were directly because people were manipulating the market in the 20s and 30s. 
and we've allowed the same thing to happen again. A concentration of power, a reduction of regulatory authority, all of this deregulation, all of this consolidation, allowing billionaires to have this kind of resource and this kind of power and this kind of control over the narrative is giving them the ability to manipulate the market. And in the end, we are all the people who are gonna suffer. We are gonna pay the price for this nonsense. We have allowed it to go on for too long. Whatever happens when the market's open tomorrow, might be bad, might be fine, Fed may step in, everything will be stabilized. Ultimately, what's going to happen is a lot of money is going to shift, a lot of asset power, whether that's in the form of cash or in the form of reduced asset values, is going to shift from all of us normal people, from every regular person in this country, even further into the hands of the wealthy who are manipulating the markets to take control of your assets and take them from you. This must stop. And if anybody is paying attention here, the third rail here in this conversation, the one that nobody wants to touch is that the rich, the ones who are the really rich, not the like kind of rich, but the really rich, the ones who are buying the elections, the ones who are manipulating the economy, they have a strong incentive to see the economy turn down and they're attempting to make it happen. The only way we can push back on this is with effective government regulation. And I, for one, would like to see several of these people arrested tomorrow. So if you're listening, SEC, if you're listening, Department of Justice, arrest the perpetrators of this disruption. You can find them. They're on the chats. Round them up. I'd love to see the police go through Sand Hill Road and pick up those venture capitalists. And I'd love to see them come for Elon and other uh, you know, other leaders in the tech industry who deserve to be punished for their manipulative financial crimes that they're engaging in right now. This isn't right. And whatever ends up happening out of this process, it's we who lose, it's not them who lose. So that's the third rail here.